Yo guys, Jonathan here. Today I got a showcase of not only some of my favorite tech, but I would go as far as to say some of the best deals in tech right now, period. Everything from a smartphone to a tablet to a camera to honestly the best sounding speakers you will ever listen to for the price. Bonus points, I'm giving one of these items away. Your choice, just drop a comment down below, let me know your favorite, I'll pick a winner. And if you're excited to win, feel free to drop a like. But before we hop in, I wanna give a huge shout out to Oculus for sponsoring this portion of the video. So Oculus just dropped the Oculus Quest, and if you wanted to get into VR but been a little apprehensive or scared because you didn't want to have to use a computer or set up these external sensors or honestly just trip over wires, this is hands down the best option out right now. So what it is essentially is this self-contained gaming VR system where everything you need to jump in is in the box. Again, there's no computer, there's no wires, it just works and that is awesome. There's a ton of really complex things going on inside. It uses four ultra wide angle sensors, there's algorithms, things that you don't need to think about that then translate your movements into VR. That is done in conjunction with the Oculus Touch controllers which transport your hands into VR and they are crazy responsive. Now, one thing that I think is a little overlooked or maybe underrated with the Oculus this quest is the fact that it encourages you to be active. Like I figured Beat Saber was gonna be a bit of a workout, it even warns you, but super hot, which is also dumb addictive. You're moving, you're dodging, you're squatting. By the end of that, I needed a T. Overall, it's a ton of fun. It's simple, easy to use. You're up in like five to 10 minutes. And again, if you wanted to get into VR, this is the best way to do it. Make sure you guys check out the link below. And again, big thanks to Oculus for sponsoring this portion of the video. So this might be arguably one of the best deals in tech right now, period, because there's not really anything close for what you're getting at this price. Specifically, this is the sixth generation iPad. Just iPad, no Pro, no Air. This was the one that was updated last year. And yeah, it's got some big ass bezels. It's not as sleek as the aforementioned Pro or Air, but it's packing a very capable A10 Fusion chip, Touch ID, a headphone jack, and support for the first generation Apple Pencil. Now, even at $329, I would still say this is the best tablet for the money, especially with Google out of the game, rest in pieces, Pixel Slate. But for whatever reason, for the past couple months, this has been on sale for $249 on Amazon. That is a freaking deal. Are you kidding me? Yes, it's gonna be great for media consumption, Netflix, YouTube, whether you're home, whether you're traveling, it's gonna give you great battery life, but I would also argue this is the best creation device you can pick up for the price, specifically for photos. Clearly you've seen what you can do with an iPad, not just a pro, but I've gone as crazy as editing a video on an iPod touch. So this will absolutely edit video, no problem. But with that 32 gig base option, I think that's gonna limit you, whereas it makes much more sense for photos. One, photos of course are not as file size heavy as video. And two, if you pair this with something like Lightroom, where your photos are stored in the cloud, that's gonna go together like lamb and tuna fish. For real though, what kind of computer, tablet, hybrid Chromebook are you gonna get at this price point that can edit photos like this? Mind you, these are 20 megapixel raw photos from the Sony a7 III. It's not like we're taking potato pics from the back of this iPad. These are real photos and the workflow is super smooth. The other thing to remember is that this will get support for iPad OS later this year. So whether you love Apple, or you love to hate Apple, I think we can all agree, if you can grab this at this price point with iPad OS, it's arguably the best computing option you can pick up for under 300 bucks. From there, this is also up there in terms of the best deals in tech right now. Much like I feel the sixth generation iPad is the best tablet for the money, when it comes to a smartphone camera, for the price, nothing comes close to the Google Pixel 3a. Yeah, it's not gonna be the fastest phone, it's not gonna compete with the OnePlus 7 Pro, the Galaxy S10, or really any of the higher end flagships, but in terms of what it does for the price, it does that extremely well. Really, I'm not even sure you can find a point and shoot that's better for the price. Yeah, you can go on eBay, maybe find a used DSLR, but as far as what you can fit in your pocket that also doubles as a smartphone, this is an incredible value. It packs USB-C, a really solid fingerprint reader, a headphone jack, which is really important for a lot of people out there. And if you really just use your phone for simple tasks, watching video, sending messages, listening to music, but don't wanna sacrifice your camera, you should absolutely check out the Pixel 3a. So next up is the Panasonic Lumix G7, which is both a stills and a video camera. It'll do 4K up to 30 frames per second, 1080 up to 60. And the crazy part is, is right now with the kit lens, it is currently only $497. That's crazy. And it's also what I'm using to record with right now. 
you kind of just got to step back and appreciate that we can shoot high quality 4K video for under 500 bucks. Like I said, it's also a great entry level stills camera. It'll shoot 60 megapixel photos. And yeah, that kit lens, it's not the greatest in the world, but unlike most cameras at this price point where that lens is permanently attached, this isn't, and you can upgrade down the road. In this case right now, I have the G7 with a Metabones adapter, and that is then paired with the Sigma 18 to 35. And that is a crazy awesome combo for not a ton of cash. Now, if you want that Sigma sharpness, but don't necessarily like the idea of adapting lenses, they now have native micro four thirds options, which are super fast, they're super sharp, and would pair perfectly with this camera. The only thing I would say to look out for with this camera is that it's not gonna blow your mind in low light situations. But if you put this in a well-lit environment, it's gonna look incredible, and you'll have a ton of fun with 1080 60. So next up is what you're listening to right now. This is the Apogee Hype Mic, which first is a super high quality condenser USB microphone, but it's got a trick up its sleeve. There's a built-in compressor in here, and that takes things to a completely different level. My guy head of the business recently dropped an awesome video on exactly how far you can push this microphone. So definitely make sure you check it out if you haven't, but whether you're looking to get into podcasting or streaming, or just looking for a high quality option to record music, this thing is super unique. Out of the box, I love the fact that it includes every cable you possibly need, USB-A, Lightning, USB-C, so it makes a perfect companion not only for iPads, but for MacBooks as well, with no dongle or adapter needed. It's super compact, so it makes a great option to toss in your bag and take on the road without sacrificing quality, but in terms of what that compressor does to your voice, you get three different levels. This is ground zero, no compression, just the microphone plugged into a MacBook. This is level one compression, so most likely it's what I would use in situations like this. Level two definitely starts to squeeze things together just a little bit more. This is also a great option for this situation. Just make sure you're in a real quiet environment. Level three definitely is where you get into that podcast radio light compression where you most likely need a pop filter. You're gonna be close to the mic, but you're going to sound incredible. Now, as far as what that would sound like on acoustic guitar with a little vocals, here is no compression. I love you so much that I hate you. I know it's so hard to blame you Cause you're so damn beautiful And here is level two, which I think sounds best in this situation. I love you so much that I hate you I know it's so hard to blame you Cause you're so damn beautiful So big shout out to Bianca for the acoustic demo and if you want to see the full version, make sure you check out the link down below. From there, as far as those speakers, if you've been looking for an upgrade, these will change your life. I'm not sure how they sound as good as they do for the price. They sound incredible. These are the iLoud Micros, and that might be reason one of you judging them because they got I in the name. Two, yeah, they're definitely not the most premium looking speakers. They absolutely look a little plasticky, but once you hear them, they will change your mind forever. Well, first off, they're utterly surprising uh, the first time you listen to them, you don't really realize that all that sound is coming out of that speaker. I usually tell people, so my main speakers are Atom A7s with uh, dual JBL subs, and my iLouds sit on top of my A7s. And if I'm working too long on my iLouds, I forget that I'm not on my Atoms with the subs. That's how good they are, and I'm not even joking. Like, that's a thing. They're just incredibly like accurate and detailed they carry more bass than any speaker that small should be allowed to but it's it's not like hyped it's actually just accurate it sounds like my main system coming through these small little speakers if we rewind to this dream desk these are were my favorite speakers i'm all kinds of confused after these iLouds but with those the atom artist threes i had never seen a speaker that compact that sounded as good as they did but they were 500 bucks each speaker and with these is 300 bucks for the pair. I'm not gonna sit here and say outright that these blow away those Atom Artist speakers because those are incredible, but for the price, they are way too close and I would go as far as saying the low end on these is better. For real though, it's almost like there's this magic hidden sub just pumping out bass, but it's not overpowering. These are as balanced as they get. 
Clearly they look and work great on a desk, they're compact. You can also go wire free with Bluetooth, but they also make an amazing portable option if you mix music on the go. Honestly, if I think about it, I don't think I've ever been as sure of recommending a product as these speakers. They sound incredible. Nothing comes close for the price, maybe even twice that. If you're looking for new speakers, grab these. Your ears will thank you. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did and you were feeling like being awesome, make sure you guys drop a like down below. Thank you so much for watching. This is Jonathan and I'll catch you guys later. Maybe you like spaghetti and meatball. Be more comfortable with that analogy.